On this channel, we covered the lesser known countries during World War II. So what happened in what is today North Macedonia during the Second World War? Well, the region was part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and was referred to as Vardar Banovina or Vardar Banate. Then, the Axis invasion of April 1941 took place and most of the region came under Bulgarian control. There was resistance, there was collaboration. In this video, you're going to learn about North Macedonia, Yugoslav Macedonia during the Second World War. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location. I'm now in Skopje for you. And if you find it interesting, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Be aware that Macedonia is a geographical region that encompasses large parts of today's northern Greece, southwest Bulgaria, some parts of Kosovo and Albania, and today's country of North Macedonia. The region has a rich history that goes all the way back to the times of Alexander the Great. Most people in North Macedonia today are of Slavic descent and not of Greek descent. The territory of Macedonia lacked clearly and unambiguously defined frontiers. It also lacked a unifying language. Until the end of the Second World War, the Slavo-Macedonians spoke a variety of dialects related to both Serbo-Croatian and Bulgarian. After the First World War, what is now North Macedonia became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, later the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. On German pressure, Yugoslavia signed the Tripartite Pact on the 25th of March, but then on the 27th of March, Serbian military leaders seized power in a military coup in Belgrade. Hitler then vowed to destroy Yugoslavia. On the 6th of April, the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia started. The details of this operation I did cover in another episode, see the link in the top right corner. When the Germans marched into the region, they were greeted as liberators by the local population. During the interwar years, policies of Serbanization were implemented, much to the dismay of the population. On the 19th of April 1941, the Bulgarian army entered the region, and they were very much welcomed as well. The Yugoslav region that was occupied by Bulgaria is the largest part of what is today the country of North Macedonia. A smaller part in the west came under Italian influence. Actually, the Italians wanted more territory, but the Germans wanted the Bulgarians to have it so they would have easier access to its minerals. During the interwar years, it was mostly part of Vardar Banovina or Varde Banate. In literature, it is referred to as Vardar Macedonia or just Macedonia, which angers many Greeks because Macedonia is a geographical region, as said before, with most of its territory in Greece. Bulgarian legislation was simply implemented in the new territories. After the initial joy, the North Macedonians became delusioned. The Serbian official from the interwar Yugoslav state were simply replaced by Bulgarian officials, which often were not the best ones. During the interwar period, the people were told they were Serbs. Now they were told they were Bulgarians. Everything was decided from the Bulgarian capital, Sofia, and efforts were made to transform the region as a part of Greater Bulgaria. Without making any formal proclamation, it simply extended Bulgarian administrative, police and judicial organizations and legislation to these regions, though it did issue a number of specific laws and decrees applicable to them. The Bulgarian government saw the region as rightfully Bulgarian. However, instead of liberators, they acted as conquerors, harsh and rude to the local population. The Yugoslav Macedonians were treated as backward Bulgarians. The Bulgarians realized only a part of the population saw themselves as Bulgarians. Education was to facilitate the process of Bulgarization. Bulgaria also took control over the Orthodox Church. By 1942, Bulgarian citizenship was imposed on the people, and those who refused would be required to leave the country. This led to the expulsion of around 26,000 Serbs and Montenegrins to German-occupied Serbia. In the future, you'll learn more about the Bulgarian occupation of this part of Yugoslavia. In September 1944, Bulgaria switched sides and was now on the side of the Allies instead of the Axis. After the Bulgarians withdrew from the territories they had occupied, the Germans wanted to take them over. The German soldiers stationed in Greece now ran the risk of being cut off by the advancing Red Army. So therefore, the Germans had to seize control over the area in order to let their comrades have a safe passage back to better defendable areas. 
The Germans sought the help of the IMRO, the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization. Back in April 1941, they wanted them to launch an uprising, just as the Ustasha did in Croatia. But, as for the Yugoslav Macedonians, nothing came of it. The IMRO was a Bulgarian-based organization established in 1893 and led by Ivan Mikhailov in 1927. It soon fell apart into a faction that supported an independent Macedonian state and a third branch, which was pro-communist. When Bulgaria outlawed Macedonian terrorist groups in 1934, Mikhailov fled to Italy. After April 1941, he spent the entire war in Zagreb as a guest of Anta Pavlic, the Ustasha leader of the independent state of Croatia. In September 1944, he went to Skopje to help the Germans by proclaiming a separate Macedonian state and organizing an administration and military forces. He realized the situation was very hopeless and abandoned the project and returned to Zagreb. For several weeks, the Germans crossed to the territory to withdraw from Greece to Bosnia. The Yugoslav partisans inflicted losses on them. By mid-November, all Axis units had left Yugoslav Macedonia. World War II in North Macedonia had come to an end. I mentioned the Yugoslav partisans, but they were not the only resistance fighters. As we saw elsewhere in the former Yugoslav kingdom, there was a conflict between different factions of the resistance. However, there was a difference. See, it was not the communist partisans versus the royalist Chetniks, but it was the Yugoslav communist party versus the Bulgarian communist party. That was the conflict. See, many Bulgarians, including the political opposition in Sofia, including the communists, they believed that this area was rightfully theirs. However, the Yugoslav partisans, they wanted to take this area for the future post-war Yugoslav state. Both the Bulgarian and Yugoslav parties urged resistance to fascism, but for the former, resistance apparently meant political opposition to the Tsarist regime, or as to the latter, it meant an armed struggle against the Bulgarian domination of North Macedonia. The CPY gained the upper hand, but this explained why their resistance took a while to take off. October 1941 it started. This was also due to the fact that the CPY had only a few members in the area, and even when resistance took off, their organization fell apart due to counterattacks. From early summer 1943, their numbers grew significantly. In response, the Bulgarians used repressive measures on a broad scale. Forced labor, imprisonment, or deportation to Bulgaria. A special type of Bulgarian counter unit was developed, though with little success. Just to be clear, Chetniks were also active in the area, but were defeated by the partisans in March 1943. What happened to the Jews in this region? As you may know, Bulgaria did not hand over its Jewish population to the Germans. But this was unfortunately not the case for the Jews living in the occupied territories of Bulgaria. The Bulgarian government took care of the roundup and deportation of an estimated 7,000 Jews from Skopje and Bitola. Thanks to my patrons, you see their names on the screen, and thanks to Vladislav, who provided me with some of the imagery I used in this video. Go to his Instagram page where he posts colorized pictures. After the war, North Macedonia became a part of Tito's Yugoslavia and peacefully broke away from the state in the early 1990s. If you're interested in the fall of Yugoslavia, I have a video for you right here. And if you're interested in other countries during the Second World War, you can check out the playlist right here. I wanna thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, give this video a like, share it with your friends, and voila, from Skopje, North Macedonia.